is nearly a decade now since the Ministry of Lands, Housing and Urban Development under the auspices of a World Bank funded project set out to give the urban infrastructure of a cross-section of municipal local government a fresh look. Started in 2013 with 14 municipalities, the Uganda Support to Municipal Infrastructure Program or USMID has grown in leaps and bounds. Today, it counts 12 municipal councils, including 10 regional cities and 11 refugee hosting district local governments, amongst its beneficiaries. From municipality roads to markets and bus parks, hitherto round down infrastructure has since seen massive transformation. The net result has been the decongestion of Uganda's capital city, Kampala. We were able to get funding and we want to thank the government of Uganda, especially His Excellency the President of the Republic of Uganda, for having allowed us as a ministry which is in charge of urban development to take on that program. And where we have passed, there is a mark. There is a mark on the part of government but also on the part of the communities where this project has been. Ten managed to be elevated to a city status because they had started seeing the tamaka, the good developments that had been put in place, then the awareness and the knowledge given to the technocrats and the political leaders. Even lobbying was not very difficult for the municipalities to be elevated to the city status. We have seen increase in revenue generation by the municipalities or cities we have seen the business communities appreciating the good roads and a beautiful city or a municipality is a center of attraction for investment. We have seen even the rate of urbanization going up because of what has been done in most of those areas. And uh, I want to appreciate USMID, the USMID program that with the coming with this new design of making roads with nice drainages and giving us street lights. It is also bringing back the other night economy. People now can trade in the night. Before 2014, by around eight, the entire city was empty. People, you could not find people in town. And you, you can see that there are bigger investments coming in. Today when you want to find nice bars, they are coming up. And people are coming from Kampala to enjoy that ABS during you know, with the waters and the bridge, it is bringing the, the, it is attracting more people to come here. So that is the ginger now I'm talking about. Ginger is so different from other areas. Because if someone is coming from wherever they are coming to ginger to see the source of the night, they are not coming to ginger alone. They are coming to ginger, they are coming to Uganda, and they are coming to Africa. We should bear all this in mind. has done a number of things here. One, the, the main market, which is, is it that four billion was done by Usmid. The Arua Taxi Park, modern taxi park, uh, under Usmid funding. We have done Idi Amin Road, we have done Lemerjoa Road, we have done Adroa Road, we have done uh, Enyao Road, and we have done School Road. We have, the impact is too big. There's a led to appreciation of land where the roads have passed. It has led to people's businesses have kicked. But in all this, we're appealing for efficiency. We're appealing for the community to be interested in these projects. These projects, Usmid will withdraw, leave them in the community. The local governments Whereas they are involved in the implementation process right now, they should be preparing their capacity to take over the maintenance and management of these facilities. With the vast bulk of the country's average annual GDP growth of 8.1% traced back to the capital, the USMID program was tasked with pulling off a diversification. It would do this in three broad ways. It set out to strengthen the capacity of participating municipalities in fiduciary, safeguards, urban planning and own source revenue generation. 
Secondly, it was tasked with increasing planned infrastructure as per the fiscal plans in question. Lastly, it set out to enhance the capacity of the management of Ministry of Lands, Housing and Urban Development in backstopping the implementation of the program. Now we hope that uh, when we come to the end, we will maintain the momentum of building roads and uh, making sure people are in safe places. We have also started uh, sensitizing the people on the use of this infrastructure. We don't want it to go down. So we are encouraging them to collect more revenue so that they can maintain their cities. The program has even built capacity for the people who work in these cities to be able to respond to the demands of the cities. If you look at Guru, you can really say, I think this was a very good choice for elevation to, to, to a city status. Mbarara is another example, Bale and Jinja. So I think from where we started, there is a very good step towards achieving of that objective of institutional capacity building. Of course, most of the things which are seen are the infrastructure on the ground, because these are tangible. But <clears throat> Behind that, there's a lot what is happening. And uh, this includes the training of staff, the urban uh, centre staff, the town clerks who are the chief executives, the municipal engineers, the procurement people. There's also equipping the, 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 these uh, cities. There's also development of systems. Systems means, for instance, computer uh, software for them to be able to plan, for them to be able to do designs. So a lot actually is done that cannot be seen, but can only be realized from the, the, the performance of these entities. And uh, it is very clear that all the years round from the beginning, there is growth. Okay? So the indicators show high performance. Actually, in the, in the last four years, I think we moved from about 60%. I think now we could be heading towards 80% if you aggregate all those indicators. So based on that assessment, it is obvious that we are achieving um, the objectives. But then when you look also on the ground, I mean, if you go to these cities, just pick one of them. If you go, for instance, to Mbale, I think by looking around, you can see that in terms of infrastructure development, that the percentage of uh, road network which is becoming uh, um, in a good condition has gone up but then also there are things which we seem to have forgotten like street lighting i think most of the street lights which are put in these municipalities had uh, broken down now if you look going to all these the, these uh, entities we are working in you find that in the cbd all the roads there have got uh, uh, street lights and we've taken the option of of solar Whose, whose annual cost is, is, is low. So I think both in terms of the assessment on paper and what you can see on the ground, there's, uh, there's improvement, which, which I think is, is very good. We provide equipment to the staff and systems. If you, if you go into the offices like of the town clerks, of the engineers, of the uh, procurement people, you can also see a little bit of order okay in terms of the equipment but also in terms of the way these staff uh, are managing the offices so i think i can comfortably say that the project is moving towards achieving its objectives when these people came they started working on this road and we the locals here we've been monitoring these people from day one if there was anything we could report to the councillors, the councillors could come to the ground. We could handle them together until even the Chinese came and said, since they started working here in Uganda, they, they have been supervised more. They have not been supervised in any way in Uganda like uh, this road. So I'm assuring you this road, like this area where we are standing, there was a latrine here. Here the depth here, a lorry can even enter. So these people, there's a lot of stone down here. The road is of good quality. Vehicles passing to Congo, they now use this road, shortcut. From Kampala, they come this way, they go to Koboko, they use this road. 
So it's a very good road. We give thanks to the government and those who have funded this. I'm seeing that now finalizing with the construction and also the market that I'm seeing the finished building they're also finalizing so that all people from the market who are not inside they have to aid to enter inside the market and they begin selling in the market and the roads that were too dusty we are going to see some change we won't see there a lot of dust where people will be suffering a lot with flu cough so this is going to help us a lot but I'm advising the road users not to over speed on this road when it's finished because they will see it as a good road they will over speed and will cause a lot of accidents when like this road will be finished those small vehicles will be using this road to their destinations and they leave that main road to those trailers that transport goods and i think it it will reduce on some road accidents because there on the main road, those trailers, when they stay there, they park there. I think it brings confusion with these pedestrians and those uh, vehicle people that move small vehicles and it leads to accidents. And on Wall Road is one of the roads that people, people love so much, business people like so much. Now that it is done, we expect a lot of businesses because it's now direct. It's, it's nice to be on a highway, tarmacked, you see. So we expect a lot of businesses, uh, high profile people walking in and out because there is now good road. The town's roads are good and uh, I like how it has been constructed. People are many in town nowadays. The government has done so much and we are happy. And according to me, I can give for them 80% of their work. It has been good that we have good road nowadays in town. We thank the government because of these roads that you easily connect to many streets you easily connect to villages, being the center and the regional city. Mbarara is at the center of Rwanda, Burundi, Congo, Tanzania. So we are making it more look so beautiful to the extent that whoever comes in Mbarara doesn't want to leave Mbarara. Seen through the lens of kilometers, the progress the Jusmid program has made is staggering. 78 kilometers of two-lane roads, 94 kilometers of covered drains, 70.5 kilometers of open drains, 111.22 kilometers of pedestrian walkways, 45.32 kilometers of cycle lanes, and 65.43 kilometers of parking lanes. The program has also been a guiding light as seen through the 2,633 solar streetlights installed. The 1,300 trash cans to manage litter have also guaranteed a clean bill of health. Three taxi parks, a lorry park and a bus terminal have also breathed life into what was once considered a flagging transportation infrastructure. Augmenting this transformation, there are 328 lock-up shops and 143 parking lots of vehicles. Green spaces known to improve mental health have also not been left out. Nearly 66,000 square meters of such spaces have been improved, with 2,431 trees planted. Well-lit green streets have led to improvements in physical and mental well-being. And basically, the town has greatly improved. The first phase we did about 3.5 kilometers, then we added about 2.5 kilometers. Kampara Road is almost also 2.5 kilometers, and then these other new roads, we have Ginger Road, we have Kasim Babiha Road, we have Unjeru, all these works are ongoing. When you move on Church Road, you see very many new apartments which have come up, you see the hotels, 
just because we have improved the infrastructure, so people are able to invest their money in an area which is properly organized. We hope that when we complete the tax pack, we shall increase the, the number of working spaces for people so that people can have uh, marketing areas where they can sell their products. We shall improve on transport because the, the terminal will be well organized. Travelers will be able to sit and wait for the con connecting uh, light taxis. And in the future, we actually expect to bring the buses on board. So this, bus, this tax pack is going to improve greatly. With the intervention of USMIT, there is a growth in our revenues. Because uh, all these roads that have been done, they are within the business, central business district. So people have put up new guest houses, hotels, others are investing in uh, schools. So I would uh, encourage, I would urge people to come and invest in Oima City. It is now a serviced town. In the next financial year, our local revenue is projected to be around 3.5 billion. And this one has been boosted by the property tax, which comes out of the properties that have been valued and they have been set up of recent. So wherever a road is being done, it's not like a white elephant. These roads are there, they are connecting to people's properties, the properties that are being put to commercial use. Uh, Gulf City is among the first towns that benefited from USMIT project and uh, uh, a quite number of kilometers were, were raised to, to, to Tarmac. More than 20 kilometers were done and actually most of the roads that are within the center of the town were made Tarmac and street lights were put plus other road furniture like uh, walkways and drainage and uh, ducts for telecommunication. All that was done. Because Yusmid has taken much of the central business district uh, with good roads, now we are concentrating using local revenue and Uganda Road Fund to work on the roads which are in the periphery of the town. And like this financial year, we are likely to work on about to maintain more than 15 kilometers where we are going to buy carvats, uh, maram, other inputs that are needed to make the roads good. But as far as livability and environment is concerned, it's been major, a major, major improvement in, in, in most of the cities where they've, they've done these USMIT projects. And we commend them for the program. And I think, as I said before, we just need to make sure it's sustainable and have a follow-on program to ensure that the infrastructure does not collapse. Because if there's no follow-up program, within five to 10 years, that beautiful infrastructure that we're seeing now would collapse. Along with oil and gas, agriculture, tourism, as well as human capital development, infrastructure takes prime importance in the National Development Plan 3, thanks to its great multiply effect in the economy. The rapid urbanization rate, currently at 2% per annum, coupled with government projections that put urban population growth at 20 million by 2035, mean that the thought process intended to make cities and municipalities livable needs to gain more traction. With 18 months left before it runs its course, the USMID program has set the pace. The program has also succeeded in putting money into the pockets of Ugandans by compelling contractors to use local labor. What we've noted as PPDA is an improvement, first of all, of the capacities of the procurement professionals that are manning these entities. Because as a requirement, each city or municipality or refugee hosting district is supposed to have procurement professionals manning the procurement and disposal units. Previously, this was not the case. Anyone would manage the procurement and disposal unit. We had accountants, we had stock managers, and every, but now the procurement function is managed by people who are qualified in procurement. And it was a key requirement under USMID. We applaud USMID for this. Evaluation has been enhanced, contract management has been improved, the accounting officers work together, contracts committees, so there has been a lot of sharing. And annually, there have been trainings conducted for all the arms in the procurement structure, the accounting officers, contracts committees, evaluation committees, internal auditors, 
procurement and disposal units, user departments. So a lot of capacity building has been done. Annually, PPDA, we conduct procurement audits on all these entities to assess their performance. And we are glad to note that the performance has been increasing with time. So we are happy for this program that a lot of capacity has been built, not only with the procurement and disposal units, but also the other arms of the procurement structures in the entities. This has raised awareness levels of projects in the numerous local governments and also brought forth the issue of public acceptability, social accountability and oversight by locals. I appeal to the business community and the residents of Lugazi Municipal, particularly the users of these new roads. They should keep the roads clean and they should not damage them. Particularly the mechanics who operate on these streets, they should be removed. I appeal to the street vendors not to put garbage in the trenches. That's why we are changing somewhere to Calvert's mindset. People should change, we have moved from the village to a town which needs to be very clean. Secondly, I appeal to the business community to pay taxes in time, such that these roads, the project will go, but the road will remain. And they will be damaged, they need to be rehabilitated. And to be rehabilitated, there must be money from taxes. We can see a lot of rural urban migration. People are coming to do business within the city, you can see the boom. We want to appreciate the bank, we want to appreciate the, the government of Uganda for the, for, for the provision for the youth mid projects which have done us so good. And we are looking forward, actually, we are, we are continuing to ask that if at all it were possible for us, to have the, for us to have another round of projects which are going to supplement these ones which are here. The USMED program has also put many urban cities in a great position to attract investment necessary for development, job creation and productivity. This has enabled the cities in question to benefit from economies of agglomeration and scale. They now boast of strengthened capacities in fiduciary, safeguards, urban planning and own source revenue generation. The trickle-down effect has been an increase in GDP collection for the country. It is 2021 financial year. That is the time when we fully went on the, uh, activating all these cities and municipalities. I told you nine cities and uh, nine cities and uh, eleven municipalities. We activated all of them on IRAS. Uh, before halfway, their collection was 26.5 billion, all the 22. But now, uh, after one year of implementing IRAS, they move from 26.5 to 32 billion. And this uh, increment, we attribute it mostly onto the introduction of most of these strategies, and more I saw the introduction of uh, an integrated revenue administration system. Which system, I told you that the development the testing, the piloting, and the rollout in the 20 sites where we are now is, was from the funding from the World Bank, and even now supporting these uh, cities and municipalities still under the World Bank through Ministry of Lands, Housing and Urban Development. We have increased our budget from 1.2, from 800 to 1.4 billion. So you can see, uh, because of that, the market which was constructed, the market which we can zoom in and see, these roads reach the market. Because of that, now goods can easily reach the market on better roads. And because of that, the market has improved from, uh, as an auxiliary, the market has been supported from almost 70 million to 140 million. You can see that jump. Because of Yusumid, because the surroundings are clean. Now in my office, I'm seeing many people coming, town clerk, we want offices, we want shops. Where are shops? Which was not there. Because now, a town which is cleaner, a town which is, uh, you can access areas, attracts people. Tororo used to sleep at 6 o'clock. But today, we see people extending up to 9. We see activities going up to 9. What does that? That's an impact. We are seeing now a business, because people used to be in darkness. How do you trade in darkness? So we are seeing that one coming up. We have constructed the tax park at 7 billion. 
and it has 45 lockups which are all used to occupy. What is this helping? A tax park which was just there minus, uh, minus uh, all this infrastructure. Now you have taxis and an organized park. You have businesses going on across the entire tax park, 45 lockups, which pay trading license, which, pay, which employ people. So that is a, a, a huge impact. In the second phase of USMID, which has 18 months to end, government extended support to some of the district local governments that host more numbers of refugees. This include the refugee stressed districts of Ajumani, Moyo, Yumbe, Arua, Isinjiro, Chiriandongo, Kamwenje, Terego, Madi Okolo, Obongi and Lamo. The infrastructure strengthening shall enhance peaceful coexistence amongst host communities and refugees. Some of the services like hospitals, schools and so on, they are integrated. Both the refugees and the host community use them together. Therefore, this intervention aims at bringing together the two communities and creating harmony among them. And like I said, it provides an opportunity for markets. The populations are now large. They produce so many things, they need to sell them. The refugee areas need to reach the nearest urban areas. So you need to create those markets. You need to build them for them. They need roads to do so. They need entertainment areas. That's why we're also doing things like the playgrounds and social centers, so that they interact harmoniously. Infrastructures such as small bridges and box culverts on impassable sections culverts and fill material to address bottlenecks in swampy areas and removing black spots prone to accidents have been buttressed. In the pipeline are infrastructures tailored to promote sports, arts and culture among others. Finals of co-curricular activities, they are held in Chidio, which is like, this is like six kilometers away from here, six, seven or ten kilometers away from here. A refugee child comes from all the way from the settlement to go and watch the finals in Chidio. So we are cutting that distance almost by half, so that instead of them going up to Chilio, they would stop at the district quarters here, which is now the, the, the venue for district finals and so on. People are going to have a wedding there. Before you went from there, you, you give us our local revenue, and that is it. So it has also the economic value on top of the social value that the community will be benefiting from. And of course, being situated here, a number of people are now craving for the land around. Because they, they, we need hotels, we need houses for, for rent, we need all those restaurants that should be able to provide a, a supplementary or subsidiary services to the play field. And we also made funding projects. In Ajuman, we have, uh, first of all, many refugees, more than the host community. And uh, we have about six projects. And this includes market in Kiraba, in Okusijan sub county, resource center in, uh, in Okusijan sub county. We have uh, one other big project of about 1.8 billion in uh, Ajumun Town Council. We have uh, under rehabilitation and uh, uh, construction, uh, tamaki of some town roads. That includes uh, administration road and market road ETC is very core. I therefore want to say Usumir project is a very very good program. I actually want to ask the donors and the government to extend it. Uganda is currently the largest host of refugees in Africa and third largest host in the world at that. The country has taken in a little over 1.4 million refugees with most of them settling in the West Nile sub-region of northern Uganda. The influx of refugees has turned the rural communities into settlements with urban characteristics. Uganda has one of the most progressive refugee regimes in the world, where refugees have the right to work, 
establish business, move freely within the country, access social services, own property, and obtain documentation. Refugees are also given plots of land on which to cultivate and build houses. This is putting enormous pressure on the local government's ability to provide adequate infrastructure and services to what is by all counts a rapidly increasing population. The Ministry of Lands, Housing and Urban Development has also extended the support through development of fiscal development plans of the areas of future development and enhancing land tenure security. As you know, we have uh, refugee hosting districts where we are also carrying out planning. The benefits of planning cannot be overemphasized. Planning has happened, but you know planning is dynamic, it doesn't stop. More importantly, capacity has been built, so it is expected that the local governments will pick it from there with their own resources. The, the good thing is that this program also was looking at uh, enhancement of own source revenue. We have seen that municipalities, cities have actually improved in own source revenue and they will continue to improve. So some of that own source revenue again it should be available for planning and implementation of plans. So basically this is what we expect that should happen.